thing is that all these classes we've done with Christine, you can go back to, because if you go to um, the Sterling website, you will see all of these classes. So you can retake them if you'd like. And Christine on her website too, she'll tell you about it. Okay, so thank you tons to Julie and Jackie for organizing this so we could do this for the last six months. It's been super fun. Um, and I just wanted to let you know that over the summer, um, at this time, we've, we've been meeting pretty much every other Friday or as close to that as we could, um, just twice a month. So there were a couple of months that probably didn't work out and we kind of avoided holidays. But um, over the summer, I'm gonna continue at this time slot. So basically every other Friday, I'm gonna do a live stream on my YouTube channel. So if you uh, have this time set aside and you're not traveling or doing you know, other things and you want to still do an art class, you can just go to my YouTube channel and right in the top of the home page, there will be a thing called upcoming live streams and you can look and see what they are. They'll be have the dates and the topics and a little spot to set a reminder if you want that. Although I think you get reminded like 10 minutes before it's supposed to start. So it's not much of a reminder. So put it on your calendar. But you know, if you want to continue something, I'm going to put that out there. And that way it reserves on my schedule this time slot for when things pick up again in the fall. If they do go back to Zoom, then I've, I've got it there. And also, since your schedules are already, uh, you're setting aside this time, it, and if you do want to continue something, it'll be at the same time, and you just go to my YouTube channel, which is, uh, you go on YouTube and you type in my name with that M. Christine in the front of it, and you'll find my channel, and you can get to that. You can also go to my website and find it. Um, you can go to my Facebook page and all of those. You just have to know that my first name's Mary. So you put that M in the front of it, M Christine Landis, and you can find me. Um, so that's, uh, I think that's the main thing. Um, I feel like I might be forgetting something, but I don't know what it is. So um, thank you again to Jackie and Julie and to the friends. Uh, and I guess we'll go ahead and jump into this. And uh, let's see, I'm going to put this up here and just show you where um, I had gone ahead and finished the one we did last time. Oh, let me put this so I can see what I'm doing because it's awfully small on my screen. Hopefully that makes it a little better. Um, so I've got I finished up the one I did last time, and uh, then I've also got for the reference photo, not sure it's doing, it, it, is it helping anyone to have that reference photo on there? The way I have it uh, on my screen, it doesn't look like it's, you can't see what it is. You can't it, see it, what it it's is. It's hard right? to tell what it is, Christine, to be honest. Okay. Um, well, then let me switch. Oh, I can do that from here. Uh, so, yeah, there. Okay, that's what it is. What the what I have for the reference, and then this is just the one um, that we did last session. But you see how it's just kind of squares with stuff in it. Um, the the particular day I made this one, uh, I was getting used to drinking um, four bottles of water every day because I had some really severe muscle. Uh, spasms and muscle cramps and the determination from the doctor was that I was severely dehydrated and uh, so my husband started lining up all these bottles of water on the counter every morning and at the end of the day I had to have drank all those bottles of water <laughs> so I would stop being dehydrated so one of the squares has four bottles of water also I had a cup of hot tea um, that morning I have one today too it's there, I'm drinking hot tea while, while we do our class. Um, and I don't remember what the next thing was. I think I was working on some a painting that had fish in it. So I just drew something that represented fish scales. 
but you see, I didn't actually draw a fish. I just put the fish scales and then maybe something that looked like possibly uh, fish fins or something wavy. And, and it looks kind of like a Zentangle type of a picture. And this, I'm talking about the square that is third from the left on the top row. Um, so you don't have to draw an actual thing for everything. Uh, the next piece is I was having all kinds of issues with a printer that I had. Printer, scanner, uh, copier, fax machine, one of those big fancy things. It had all these buttons and stuff, and it was giving me so much grief uh, that day. And so I sketched out a little bit of my printer. That's what that thing on the top row all the way on the right is. And then you can just see um, art is a part of my day every day. Uh, I, I play uh, Irish fiddle, so I put a little bit of my violin drawn in there. Um, it rained that day, so I put an umbrella with some raindrops. And none of these are full pictures uh, in and of themselves necessarily, but you put them all together on a little, uh, on a grid like this. And uh, it's pretty cool, the, the overall piece you can come up with. And I think that the, uh, the overall thing that I came up with for uh, our last session came out pretty cool looking as well. Uh, so um, the point is, is to, to do this kind of thing, not as an exercise, but as something fun to do. And then you, um, you are exercising your skills. You're, you're practicing drawing and practicing painting and you're improving your skills. You're building your confidence. And I think I've, I've said before, when you are confident when you're working, it shows in your finished piece. So uh, if you're trying to draw something and you're nervous about it and you're, you're drawing and erasing and drawing and erasing, you know, that, that tension comes across in your artwork and makes you less happy with it. But when you will just be confident and just draw the thing and, and paint it and, and um, not stress over it so much, you will, um, that confidence will come out across in your work and you will make paintings and things that you shock yourself uh, how happy you are with them. You put them down and come back in a couple of days and look at it and you go, wow, uh, did I draw that? So that just comes from, from confidence. And so that's why we're doing this kind of thing today because it's to help us, um, to help show you that you can draw some stuff like this and they don't have to be perfect. Uh, I think my husband has run off with my ruler. This one's not big enough, but it'll have to do. Um, but anyway, you can draw some stuff um, and, and paint it and, and be happy with it and put it in, in a grid like this. You can do all kinds of themes, whether you choose, um, let's see, a, a theme of all the different flowers you have in your garden or a theme of um, all your grandkids playing, uh, a theme of all the books you've read, a theme of all the books you want to read over this coming summer. Just, you know, different things like that. Think up um, whatever kind of a a theme you want. And I like the day in my life theme because um, it, it gives me a such a variety of stuff to put into my piece. And I like how they come out. So you should be hopefully have figured out that I'm going to want you to make a grid on your um, paper. Although it's not exactly a grid, I did start drawing one on here. You can see that I was doing that with my ruler. Now I'm drawing boxes in there and I'm going to go back and erase these lines from in between because I prefer the look of it like that. And then I'll, what I'll do is I'll take a, a, a black pen, uh, maybe a Sharpie, 
Let's see what all I've got here. I've got just a regular black permanent marker. Don't know where I put my Sharpie pen, but anyway, um, something like that to go over these lines and uh, darken it and it will enhance the appearance of it, make it look really, really cool. Uh, I wanted to tell you too, while we're just drawing our grid and get going, and at this point too, you could be going ahead with drawing little, um, little thumbnail sketches of, of whatever your theme you've chosen to be. Um, I have taken some other people's professional drawing for beginners courses just to see how other people teach this. Um, not this in particular, but you know, teaching beginner art. Uh, so I took some classes to, to gain some tips and ideas. And one of the really cool key things that I picked up on is that um, if you will draw instead of with a pencil, if you will go ahead and just draw with your pen, and that can be your ink pen or your fine point marker pen or whatever, just draw with a pen, something that you cannot erase. Uh, and colored pencils can work for that too because most of the time colored pencils are not erasable. But anyhow, um, draw with a pen because what happens is you have to like be married to that line. You can't erase it. Once you've drawn it on there, you have to just accept it and make it work in your piece. And while that sounds really scary and you're thinking, oh no, I can't do that. I can never do that. I can't draw well enough to do that. Um, you need to understand most artists, if they're working to draw something and going for uh, a degree of realism in it, or, or even sometimes not even that, you just, we sometimes change your mind. We put a line somewhere and we decide, you know what, I don't think I like it right there. And you, you want to erase it and move it over. And there's nothing wrong with that. But my point is professional artists don't always draw exactly perfect uh, in one go, whatever it is they're trying to draw. So you don't need to be thinking, I can't draw good enough to draw with a pen. Because that's not the point. The point is getting you to, to learn and be more accepting of the lines that you draw. So if you draw them with a pen and you're stuck with it and you just have to make it work, it's really kind of amazing how once you push yourself to do that a little bit, you do get where you can see that it's not so critical that you get your line exactly in the right spot um, because we're making art. We're not, I can't think of, an, uh, of an, a thing we might be drawing that might be so critical that we get it exactly right right now. I can't think of a good example, but, but we're not trying to recreate photographs. We're creating art and um, I can't really talk and do this at the same time. <laughs> Let me get these lines finished on here. Um, shoot, I had a, a thought flitted into my head and, and it's gone out already about drawing with this pen. It'll, it'll come back to me and I'll say it again in, in a minute. But, um, but the point is draw with your pen and get where you like your lines like they are. And, um, Oh, I know what it was I was going to say. When I was just recently up visiting my kids and grandkids, they had this new game that they bought and they whipped it out. And it involved um, the one person took a, a little stack of scrap paper and they just put a scribble on it. Uh, it, it could have been a, a circle. It could have been two circles linked. It could have just been literally a scribble and they put a, a different look and scribble on every single piece of paper. And then they gave one of those slips of paper to all the other players in the game. And then they drew a card out of the deck and, uh, and they had to like roll a dice or something, pick a number. You look at the card and the item number uh, on the card that matches the dice that number that you rolled, it might be something like um, 
a, a banana split or um, driving your mom to the doctor, just any kind of goofy thing like that. All, but all kinds of variety of things. Well, then each person in the, in the game had to take the slip of paper they had with the scribble on it and draw an illustration of whatever that uh, item was called out. So like if it was banana split and you had a scribble that looked like a bunch of zigzags, you had to turn those zigzags into a banana split. And it was huge fun and also really cool uh, as an, uh, from an artist perspective to watch how everyone uh, was doing that. And we got some really fun drawings uh, that resulted from that. So uh, if you want to try that today, you could just put a different scribble in uh, or, or, you know, sometime put a different scribble in each one of your blocks and then um, do some random, I don't know, play a, play a random game of I spy or something like that. Look around at your room and see an item and then turn one of those scribbles into that item uh, and, and see how fun that is. It, it, it can... It, it, it has just enough stress about it, especially if you're playing the game because uh, you're in competition with everyone else, but it's fun. So uh, from this point, um, I'm gonna go ahead and start drawing things that I've been working on today. Um, and probably I'm gonna make it be all this week. So this one's gonna be a week in my life. And there's been a heck of a lot of time sitting at my computer um, so I'm going to draw a computer keyboard and I'm going to draw it with this pen. Actually, let me use a different one here. Yeah, this is a good one. I'm going to draw it with this pen because I told you that's something you could do. So I'm going to just figure, I've got a keyboard right here. And oops, I've already got a, a sideways line there. Um, let me look at what I've got going on here. There's just these weird looking keys across the top of my keyboard that look like that. And then I've got them starting to be more like this. So this is my keyboard that's played a huge role in my life in the last several days. I've been putting uh, stuff on updating my Etsy page and updating my um, art merchandise pages and all that kind of stuff. And that sucks up so much time. It's, it takes my energy away. I'm not really doing anything except sitting at the computer thinking and, um, uploading photos and creating tags and descriptions and double checking the the orientation of the of the artwork if it came out right and figuring out prices and all that kind of stuff it's crazy let's see i've got a long one right here that's the space bar and that's pretty good on that I have arrow keys over here. I guess I will go ahead and put something for them. And then I've got, which one comes first? I can't see it. So I'm gonna put a comma right there and a period right there. Might be wrong, but whatever. And and anyway, then I, I'm just gonna fill in the letters that go on here and then I can move to another square and figure what else have I got going on today. And um, um, one of those things is I'm still drinking bottles of water so that I don't get dehydrated. So there's my water and I'm just gonna put a title on it. It's 
So that looks like a bottle of water. It looks a little bit more like a bottle of beer. <laughs> You'll have to take my word for it that that's a water bottle there. That one looks a little bit more like the bottle of water should look. Unless that looks like a Coke bottle. So there's my water bottles and I'm also having a cup of tea and I'm going to just put that right in the same drawing. And this is my mermaid cup that I'm drinking out of today. It's one of my favorite cups. I'll show it to you. There, can you see it? <laughs> there, isn't that pretty? That's my mermaid cup. It's one of them. I have actually got several mermaid cups because I like mermaids. And now that I think of it, I could draw a mermaid in one of my um, blocks. And um, I usually draw a lot of them in and then paint. But what you could do is draw one and then paint it or color it and then do the next one um, like that. So this is kind of a um, do what works for you plan or method here. I'm getting my mermaid drawn on my cup. She's not totally looking like a mermaid, but I know what she is, so it's going to work for me. I'm going to put it full of hot tea and put a little steam coming up from it. There. And I just realized I could be zooming in so you could see these better. So see, I'm just, I'm just kind of sketching these in quickly. You don't need to put a whole lot of detail because it's considered a thumbnail sketch. People use these for planning all kinds of things too. You can plan a party with a, with a paper like this and you've gridded it all off and you do a little thumbnail of everything that you're, that's pertaining to your party. You can put your menu, uh, you know, draw your cake on here, uh, draw your arrangement for how you want the tables set up in the venue. You can draw what kind of flowers you want to have, you know, you can put all that on something like this and then it's called a storyboard. And so it's a, it's a real thing. So I guess, um, if anyone wants to unmute and ask a question or make a comment, um, now would be an okay time to do that. Otherwise, I'm going to keep blathering on about what we're doing here. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to throw my, my paintbrushes out here. And draw some of my paintbrushes. And you can be as exact uh, as you want on exactly what the details are, or you can be extremely loose and uh, totally change up what you're looking at, make it suit what fits your space or fits your mood. 
fits what you feel like drawing today. And I think I'll throw a pin in here. Because it's a different tool that I'm going to be using on the same picture. So there's my pen. And um, how about a pencil? Throw a pencil in there too. There, I got those things going. Uh, <clears throat> let's see if I can get this whole mermaid. I don't know if I can get a whole mermaid in here. Okay, not perfect, but when I put color on it, I'll make it look more like a mermaid. Now, um, let's see, let me think of something. While I'm thinking up something else to draw, I'm gonna put some color on some of these. And I've got color already in my paint palette and I'm just gonna use what I have. And I'm painting in kind of a hurry. You don't really always have to do this in a hurry. I think I've said that before. But also, it's a sort of a style. So if you do want to hurry and make it uh, have that, that style to it, you could do that too.
Now I want to turn this mermaid into more of a silhouette than an actual whole mermaid. So I'm going to put just some purple color in here. Darken it up a lot for her hair. Lighten it a little bit for the tail. too much paint on there so I'm just going to pick some of that back up with my paintbrush. And then because I have a hard time painting skin blue, I'm going to just put some other color together here and give her skin a little bit of a glow. Not really trying to be mermaid skin color because right at the moment I don't remember what color that would be. So I put that there and since she's got a pretty star, I'm going to put some bright yellow in it. And there's my mermaid swimming up out of the depths of whatever ocean she lives in. I could draw, well, I could put a little bit of seaweed in there if I wanted to. A little indication of some. Not much though, because that doesn't seem like it would go with the star. Now, um, I meant to grab I have these beautiful um, conch shells, seashells uh, that I collect when I travel and when we go to the beach or someplace like that. And I forgot to bring one with me. I have a really pretty one that I picked up on a camping trip up at Assateague Island when I was up there with my daughter um, right before the lockdown happened. I don't remember exactly or not right before, but the fall before that. Anyways, um, I'm going to put a seashell in here and I made a little boo-boo and got some paint where I don't want paint right there. So let me clean that up. Must have been on my finger. Yep, got blue paint right there. Well, here's an example of, I said, sometimes you just have to accept what you, the marks you got in your paper and incorporate them into your piece. I'm going to have to do that exactly right there because that blue won't come back up off the page. So um, maybe I'll just make a seashell kind of a picture right here. That's the start of one. Now, how would I finish that off here? It's gonna come down here and go out that way and go like that and have that on it right there. That's gonna work for me. And I'm gonna say that that is laying on some sand and then I've got ocean water back there behind it and I'm not really gonna to try to make that an actual scene I'm just going to paint some color 
that's like uh, ocean waves color back here. Let's make some stripes of the appropriate color. There's my ocean. Now I need some sand color. Um, and I find a good sand color is if you take a yellow or a gold and you put a little tiny bit of uh, one of your purple colors into it, it just neutralizes it really nicely. And then you add plenty of water to thin it out. If it's too dark, um, just add a little touch more yellow or um, you could even put in a little tiny bit of red in there if you want, but thin it really out with a lot of water. And then you got some nice sand color going on. And I'm going to just put a little bit of my red oxide in there to give it some life and prettiness. So there's my shell laying on the beach. And then I just get some colors that might be in this shell and just kind of Put in a little bit of, of uh, decoration, if, if you will. And I'm going to get this color on here, and then I'm going to take some of it back out with a wet brush to make it loose. I don't like that color, so I'm going to lift that back out and exchange it for this color. And once that's dry, I'm going to put a little bit of bright yellow over it. Now I'm going to take um, one of my flat brushes and put water on it and just kind of loosen this up in here, this stuff that I, where I put this color on. but I don't want to get all of it. I don't want to cover up all of the white in there. And while it's wet, I can take and put in a little bit more color for some shadow. And because it's wet, the color will run a little bit. And that'll look pretty. And then I might have some more uh, dots of color on the back of the shell. And I'm going to touch in a little bit of a brown color in some spots. Now it's maybe a little more colorful than the shell would actually have been, but I was trying to make it pretty. So it's okay. And because the paint, uh, all the paper was all wet here, my colors have kind of run together. And that is cool too, because that makes a, a, a really neat appearance happening. And I'm gonna just put a little bit more of this yellow in here for this glow on the inside of the shell. And put a little bit of sunshine up there on the top part of the shell. Maybe a little of my sand color needs to go in there. There. I'm going to quit messing with that one because I like how it looks. It's just a fast little seashell laying on the sand beside the water. And I didn't st stress over um, drawing this exactly perfectly but it's got the appearance that watercolor gives to things. It's, it's really loose and the colors are running together and it's actually pretty. Uh, 
even though it's just a quick little thumbnail sketch on my day in my life picture. So that's uh, just an example of what I would like you to see that you can do with, um, with these thumbnail pages to create yourself a, um, a thing to refer back to and and remember how you did some of these different things you can you you can work out how to do things uh, and and surprise yourself and then also it, be, it becomes like a journal a picture journal and you can refer back to it um, and remember you know things you were doing maybe you were having a good day so you can think back to that and and remember it and that's a good thing that happens. You can remember times you were sharing with some friends or something. Also great for travel, do travel sketching. Yes, travel sketches work really great for this. And you don't need a whole lot of stuff either. I have stuff spread all over my table, but I wouldn't really need this much stuff. I could take, um, I have a little travel this is just a small travel um, watercolor palette that I have. And um, you can buy really nice travel palettes. And um, what have I got? What color have I got on here? Oh, there we go. Good. Um, you can buy really nice travel palettes and take them with you. And they some of them come with a folding uh, paintbrush. And then you take a couple of uh, of pens like this. And I've actually got a, a whole big folding thing that I can put paintbrushes and pens and pencils in and a couple of colored marker sets or, or one. Um, you know, this one's kind of compact, but it's got uh, 12 different colors in it. And you can do a lot with that. And you can just draw and sketch uh, as long as you're not driving. If you're the driver, don't try to sketch <laughs> but uh anyway this is i've got a couple of things going here and i've got um some nice seashore stuff i'm, I'm going to put some more put a little bit more color on another one of these paint brushes here and i probably won't even put a background uh on oops that's not the color i wanted i probably won't even put any kind of a background on this one because it doesn't really need it. Put the ferrules on there. And I guess I do need some color in the bristles of this one. And this one. The other one, I'm going to paint it like it has blue paint in it because that'll look like it is my, actually my paintbrush. My paintbrushes, these all start out white. They're so pretty when I first buy them, bright uh, white color. But then I use them and I use so much blue paint all the time that it stains the bristles. So I can never get them back to, to white. And I'm saying white, I mean white. They, they start out this color and they, and they pretty quickly get to this. And that's not got a lot of dried paint in it. It's just stained from the paint. Anyway, um, let's see what else might I want to draw here. I'm going to have to run some errands. So um, what I can draw, let's see, I'm going to, I got to think this up in my mind because this is another way that this is good for you because it forces you to stop and think and visualize in your head, what do you want to draw? Now I'm going to run errands and I'm going to get in my car to do that. So let me think about how I might want to um, illustrate my car here. I could draw the typical little car um, thing, but I prefer uh, doing close ends like on my, uh, on the reference you can't see right now. Let's go back to this. Uh, like on where my printer or I'm zoomed in uh, just showing part of my printer. I didn't show the whole thing. And uh, even my violin that I drew there, I didn't draw the whole violin. I just zoomed in uh, and drew part of it. Uh, 
So that's a, a another way to make your pictures look really cool. Uh, so um, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have a tire right there. And I have no idea what my hubcap looks like without going outside to look. So I'm probably going to just make something up, but I need some tread on my tire there. So there's some tire tread and we'll just assume my hubcap looks something like that. And I'll put the right colors in it. Then I got some pavement here and maybe we can see the very bottom edge of my car. And that's probably going to be dark color. So put that like that. And then there'll be some shadow back in here, but I'll do that with the paint. So, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> uh, let's see here. I want a really, really dark color. I'm going to take, um, I'm going to take some of one of my purples. And I'm going to mix some green in it and get a really nice dark going and just put that right out on there. And let's get a little bit more purple, a little bit more green, get it really, really dark without a lot of water and just put that on there and hopefully that indicates the tire tread pretty good. close enough, put the inside part of it on there and then that's going to be dark back in there. But I'm going to make it a little bit more to the purple side. So I have some color and some, because you know when you're looking at dark color things, the way the light reflects on it, you can start seeing color in there and it looks, it looks better than just uh, just plain dark color. Let me zoom in on that, see if you can see what I'm talking about. Oops, wrong button. There. Um, I've got, you know, that doesn't show it up any better either. I, anyways, I've got some, uh, it's greener over here and more purple over here. And it just uh, indicates, it's a way for me to show uh, that how the light is hitting them different ways. And this is meant to be the metal part on there. And I touched the purple with the wet brush and now it's smeared, but that's okay. All right, now I need some ground for my um, tire to be sitting on. And it's gonna need to have some color in it showing where shadow is on the um, pavement below the car. So I get a little bit more color going back up underneath there and put a little bit more blue in it. And I'm going to think that there might be dappled sunlight or something like that happening. And then when we get to the other side, There's pavement on the other side of the car and it looks something like that. And then I go back into that dark. Let's see, I'm gonna do the green and purple again to get a dark color for this bottom edge of my car. And my car is gray so I want to lighten that way, way, way up. Put that right above there. Then I need some shadow back behind inside of there. And I'm going to get more purple added into it. Just again for a little bit of variation and to show there's something different going on right there. Okay, that's... That's me running errands today.
Hopefully my tire looks better than that because this one almost looks like it's flat. I want no flat tires while I'm running errands. Now, when I do this kind of stuff, I don't like to feel pressured and pressed to hurry. Uh, I, I don't ever feel that there's any real need for me to, to uh, hurry up and finish. I just don't allow myself to get feeling that way. So I'm gonna put my brush down for a minute here. Let's see, this is my tabletop back behind there and if I was at my desktop there'd be tabletop back here too so that's what I'm going to do there I tried to put some shadow in there and it came out too much on the dark side, but it's, it's good. Okay, so what I would do is I would just put my brush down uh, and, and take a minute to drink some of my hot tea, drink some of my water bottle, maybe stand up and walk around and, and look at something a little bit farther away instead of looking constantly at this close thing, because that's the thing they tell us you know, when you're sitting at your computer too long, you need to um, stop every once in a while and, and let you give your eyes a break and look at something far away instead of close up. So I do those kinds of things and I don't rush these kinds of things because there's no, no one is standing over my shoulder. I have no real deadline. And even though we have a deadline in our class today, we don't have the kind of deadline that says you can't take a break. And I find that taking a break allows my mind to, to stop pushing, pushing, pushing to find, to draw the next thing and pick up the next paint color and stuff like that. It gives me a chance to step back and take a look at what I've got so far and let my mind just sort of float over what I've got going. And more ideas will drift in that way when I'm not still pushing. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a drink of my hot tea. And again, if anyone wants to uh, chime in and um, make a comment, ask a question, show us your piece, anything like that. I really like doing these. This is Jackie. I, I don't usually divide mine up into page, I mean, the squares like that, but I have small sketchbooks. Larry and I never go anywhere without our sketchbooks. And we do this kind of stuff all the time. Mm hmm. I did divide mine up into squares and, and I labeled everything that I've been doing this week and everybody who's been around me, but I think this is fun. I like it. I like your piece. I like it a lot, Jackie. Well, I tried to, um, I'm actually pet sitting at a house and this morning I got up and the sun was shining through this tree in the back and I'm watching the tea kettle and this house is just full of Freya. So this is the Eiffel Tower and the dog is up there in the corner. So this is the things I've been doing this week. That can looks hold, awesome. Hold can it you up. hold yours up to the camera a little bit better, Barb? I don't know. Uh, uh, okay, how's is it, that? Is it That's cute. Angela I like your or, flowers too. Wait, whose is it? I'm on the I'm looking at the wrong person. Angela or no, it's Barb it was doing hers first, and then this Angela. Is Angela. Up. This is Angela. Oh, Angela's up. That's I'm that's my air, that's my air condition that broke, and the Visa card to charge the air condition. <laughs> I like that. Wait, Angela, I didn't get the number off that Visa card. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Barbara, and let's see yours again, Barbara. I didn't see that one. Yeah, it's hard to do if we're not talking. Okay. Yeah. Tell me when you're done so I can uh, stop. You almost look like your sister's work. 
<laughs> we almost look like we're sisters, but we are. <laughs> yeah, nice. Well, that Very looks nice. great. Done? Oh, I noticed you have a bottle of wine in there. Did you see mine too? I only put a glass in mine. I was thinking about a case. Maybe maybe a <laughs> bottle would be more fair. It's half empty. And so is my <laughs> coffee cup. <laughs> put yours back up, Jackie. Okay, wait a minute. Let me let me do. Okay, here's mine. Oh, that's nice. Very so nice. I've been Hold doing lawn little. and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Anybody else showing theirs? If you, if you Wait, don't, I, oh, okay. Mercedes. I have mine. Mercedes. Yes. Ah. Well, the, the first one Mercedes, is. Mercedes, uh, so we can see it. Yeah, hold it, hold it back uh, just okay. a little bit. Hold it away from the camera a little bit, Mercedes. You're okay. too close. Okay. There, now we can okay. see the whole thing. Yes. Okay, music, because I love music. That is me with my mask going everywhere. <laughs> <with the mask. laughs> the, star, the star is uh, because I have been teaching a class at the center where we did this kind of mm. uh, things. Oh, oh that. So I, I, I draw that one. Um, it, the, the monkey, because I did the collage and I used that picture of a monkey and so I draw it <laughs> and um, I that's it I have to finish <laughs> well they're coming along beautifully I like them oh, thank you mm -hmm. and you know when you put things like that in there that you've been working on Marcelina. <laughs> um, you you do literally make a, a, a journal you know for yourself to to um, look back later and remember what you did Hi, Lynn. I've got you yes. up here now. Except you're you're muted. muted yeah. Happy birthday, Lynn. I did a birthday card. I did a birthday card for a friend. All the things that she likes. Uh, oh, that's oh, a great that idea. Is, that is a great idea. You're right. So very it's nice. Beautiful. Is it's that popcorn? Good. I enjoyed it. The popcorn. <laughs> I love popcorn. Um, I don't know what it is, but she loves to cook. So. Oh. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. It can be whatever she wants. Uh -huh. Perfect. I like that. A lot of fun. Okay. Um, all right, I got mine back to gallery view and I don't see anyone else waving theirs around. So I guess that means nobody else wants to share right now, <laughs> which um, which means we just go back to um, to more painting and drawing, unless you're finished and you want to. Uh, you want to just watch or whatever. But I am going to uh, let's see here. I'm going to switch to. Oops, not that. Switch back to that. And I drank my whole cup of tea. I wonder if I should draw an empty teacup now that I drew a full one. I don't think I'm going to do that though. I'm going to just put some color here on my water bottles. I've actually got Aquafina brand, so they have nice pretty blue labels. And I'm going to pull that out so I can see the writing. Make a little spot where it looks like there's writing on all these other ones. There, that looks like Aquafina water bottles. And Here's my tea in my cup. And a little color on the mermaid. And that looks just like my mermaid cup. So there are these colored dots around here. And I'm not gonna, well, yeah, actually, I'm gonna put a little bit of table. Let's see. 
just a little bit of table underneath them. And that's all of the background I'm giving that one. Because I like how that looks. Um, now I need to put some more information on my keyboard up here. Hmm. I'm going to put the J right there. Now I have to think really hard about this because I've typed for so many years. I don't even think about where these keys are anymore. <laughs> um, and I can't quite see it if I don't get on my step ladder. There, okay. But there again, I should really just visualize this in my head because it's exercising my brain and that's a good thing for us to do um but i can't exercise my brain and talk at the same time <laughs> and draw too much That's what's there. Then, and, and I discovered too, it's kind of cool sometimes to use um, an old pen. Oh, these should have been shifted a little bit and they're not, oh well. Um, if I use an old pen, it, um, it, it skips and gaps and stuff like that and I get a really cool uh, appearance. And, and I had thought, that that was maybe a little weird that I was doing that, but I actually watched a demo of a, a professional artist doing some really cool um, abstract work this past week. And she said that same thing. She has a bunch of, uh, of mark making tools uh, that are old and uh, been used forever, their favorite ones, and they're kind of losing their their oomph or something. And uh, she still uses them because she loves the way she can incorporate those skips and 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 uh, spots where it, it didn't mark or it made an inconsistent mark, you know, too thick and then too thin. Um, she puts those in her work. And, uh, and so that's the thing you can do too. Just throwing that can out I there. Can question, Christine? What was that? I said, may I ask you a question? Yes, uh, I please. That, um, in some of your squares, you have backgrounds, but like in the paintbrush one, you don't. Now, are you going to leave that without putting in any background on it so some of them are different, or are you putting a background yeah. on all of your paintings? Um, let me uh, switch to the this page again. I did the same thing here. This one is actually finished, but it isn't finished, but it is, if you know what I mean. I did not paint the toucan at all, but I did paint the paintbrushes and I put a background behind the paintbrushes. I, I did not necessarily put much of a background behind the flower. I painted a background behind the teacup. Um, when I did the umbrella with the raindrops, I only painted the umbrella part. I didn't even paint the handle and I didn't paint the raindrops and I didn't paint any background. It's it's just kind of random. Uh, and the thing, the crate with bottles in it that's above the umbrella, I didn't paint those bottles. I just put a light wash of green all over the whole thing. Great. So, okay. And I see that you didn't actually try to match them up or anything there. It's, I don't mean to say hodgepodge, but you didn't, you didn't try to say, okay, every other one, I'm going to do this or that. Correct. Yeah. Hodgepodge is a perfect word for it. Um, it's it's just um, it's ramshackle. It's it's um, um, just kind of throw a little bit of this and a little bit of that in, because frankly, that's what my days usually are like. <laughs> I, I you know, I'm not a chicken with its head cut off running around. Not quite that bad, but but I do have so much stuff going on and I run to this thing and I run to that thing and and I'm sure you're all familiar with you're in the middle of working on something and the phone rings and the laundry machine buzzer goes off so you're trying to finish your phone call while you switch the laundry into the other uh, you know out of the washer into the dryer 
um, or, or you're unloading the dishwasher and, and stirring the pot on the stove and shooting off an email, you know, all this kind of stuff. We just try to get it all done because um, that's kind of how our culture has been. You, you got to you got to do everything all at once and hurry up and get it all done uh, to prove how productive you are. But that's one reason I like to do art because it lets me have an opportunity to slow down and just do one thing at a time. But at the same time, um, I don't have to do my, I, I don't have to make everything match. I could, if that was the theme of what I was doing and I wanted to draw um, say, so let's go back to the theme of flowers. Say I drew a, a different flower in every different box. Um, for one thing, I wouldn't necessarily do this box and then this box and then this box. And then I don't find uh, that that's healthy for me to do because I can get a little too uh, over into perfectionism and get cranky or short tempered with my loved ones around me because they're not doing everything the right way. So for me to loosen up and do some over here and some over here and some back over here like that is helpful and healthy for, for me. Um, so all of these little things I've just kind of discovered through doing art and through doing projects very similar to this. And I was just having a lengthy discussion with a, a friend of mine who is a, uh, an internationally successful uh, artist from Lima, Peru. But she's, she lives here now. But, um, but we were talking about um, the fact, wait, I lost my train of thought because I was thinking of something else I could show you. We were talking about, um, darn, it's going to come to me. I hate when that happens. <laughs> um, oh, we were talking about how a lot of times I, I let myself do stuff like this and do this doodling and drawing and stuff like, um, like this right here where I'm just having fun and playing and coloring with my markers. And I let myself think this is not real art. This is just goofing off. This is just goofing off. But actually, this is real art. And and there's, um, it was last week? No, when we were doing the abstract um, fruit bowls, I had mentioned an artist named Joan Miro. He's from Spain. And uh, he does a lot of uh, work where he's got color and stuff painted on there. And then he'll do line work in with it as well. And some of it can look very similar to some of this stuff that I do, where I just, uh, and I've showed you how we, we put a bird or something on and then we doodle all around the top of it. Um, a lot of his work is like that. And he's a, uh, or, you know, he's a, a, prof, uh, a well known um, artist that back when he was painting, which I think was in the 1930s, but I might have my details not quite right on that. But, um, he came up with this style that's widely uh, successful and, and he's well known. And it's real art and it doesn't look a whole, it's not a whole lot different than this. So, so this is real art, even though it feels like playing sometimes. It feels like I'm just relaxing, letting off some steam, kind of uh, loosening my grip on things so I'm not uh, trying to be so perfect and so I'm not trying to get everything done all at one time. And so I can be happier and nicer <laughs> and all that stuff. Uh, so that's why I kind of uh, really promote these type of projects a lot because it's, it's healthy in so many ways to do art like this and it's fun. So I guess that was a long-winded answer to that question. <laughs> Sorry. 
but nobody else is unmuting and talking. So I have to fill up all the air. So while we're doing that, I'm going to draw. I think everybody's busy drawing and, and doing on their, oh, Marianne's got something to show oh. us. She just held up. Marianne, you yep. have to talk too. Otherwise we don't know you're holding something up. Yeah, oh. let's, let's. Uh, this is my yeah. day today. I went to Citrus Tower in the central Florida where you can see all the oranges. We didn't go up there yet, but we will be. Uh -oh, um, what did I do? Hold on a second. I, I clicked on spotlight on you, Marianne, and it went to Jackie. I don't know why, but there, it's fixed. Go ahead. Okay. We went to Cracker Barrel for breakfast and had eggs. <laughs> I've been, we're staying at a campground called Bees in our motorhome. All right. We visited Citrus Tower, which is in central Florida. Mm -hmm. um, and it's where you can see all, where all the orange, orange groves used to be. That's what that's for. Mm -hmm. Went into an Italian market and I bought cannolis and I'm trying out some cake for my birthday. I don't know which one I'll get. Um, I bought two watermelons in the last two weeks. All right. Tacos the other day. And this is a design, sort of a design of a house that we want to build. Awesome. It's great. Oh, and it's in an oak grove. That, that is beautiful. And that's a thing that, you know, you, if you make these frequently and you put them together in a book, you can look back later and, and see like these journal pages of what you were doing and what you were thinking and what uh, had matter and, and importance to you at that time. That it's really cool. I'm so jealous. You got to go to Australia, didn't you? Yes, I did. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> okay, this one's Africa, South Africa. Wow. Australia, New Zealand. We went to Hong Kong, but I also went to China. Paris. And this is Germany and Paris and Russia. I made one many, many years ago. And Easter Island and Ireland I'm, and Italian. We went to Italy as well. Cool. That was the first. But this is today's. Well, those are beautiful. Thank you. Really are. Really nice. I'll keep working though, because I got to do the backgrounds and everything. Very <laughs> nice. Very nice. Thank Very you. Nice. Yeah, you don't have to finish it all in one day. It, it's nice uh, when you can finish it all, um, or, or you know, most of it. But you really don't have to finish everything in one setting. There's there's no pressure. You, you only the pressure you put on yourself. And like I said, for me, this helps me stop doing that, stop pressuring myself so much to, to get too much stuff done. So uh, I've got it on gallery view now so i can see if anyone else wants to show anything but i see a lot of uh heads down working and uh and a lot of people with their cameras turned off i'm gonna assume that's also because the heads are down and working i'm just curious um are a lot of you taking vacation time in june and july or what does your schedules look like? Most people will be around. Um, most people will be around. Okay. Most people will be around because not even the cruises are working yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know, you guys, even if you're not taking vacations, don't forget how much we have around us to see. The Everglades, the zoos, uh, there's a zoo in Palm Beach, there's a zoo in Miami, the Sea Aquarium, Butterfly World, Flamingo Garden, all those places are wonderful to take your sketchbooks and sit and draw. They really are. They absolutely are. And if you're going to any of those places, call me and maybe I can come with you. <laughs> yeah. 
Also, well, you can stay socially distanced at most of those places too. It's great. So, yeah. you know, we've got such a huge world around us. Even just driving down to the beach is full of things to draw and see and do and feel. True. I went to Deerfield Beach with a friend of mine last weekend. And, you know, we had, we had our, our six or eight feet distance between us and it wasn't super crowded. And we picked a spot where we were under some trees. So we had some shade and there was so much beautiful stuff to draw. I don't know if I have mine where I can show you. It's not finished because I don't finish things in one setting, but uh, we had a blast and we were outdoors the whole time. There, this is what I painted. Mm, nice. I guess let me, uh, let me make it big so you can see it. But we were, we were just outside painting. We were close enough we could talk and chat with each other. Again, this one's not finished, but you know, you get the idea. Uh, and that was just at the beach. Um, no place special. Like Jackie said, we've got all those places like Flamingo Gardens and all those things that we can do. And so many of them are outside. So we can do that now and, and get to actually enjoy a little bit of each other's company and be outside in the fresh air and making some art if you take your sketchbook along. True. It's such a good, it's such a good point, Jackie. One other thing I wanted to mention a little bit different is for those that might be interested, the Van Gogh experience also. Oh, yeah. And it's an art experience in Miami, right near Wynwood. If you look it up, um, I think it's at Ice Palace Studios. But if you look it up, you will see Van Gogh Miami and it's an immersion experience where you go and you, and since I haven't been there yet, I don't know, but I am going, um, but you, you go and it's all his famous artwork like Starry Starry Night and you, um, it's an immersion. You, their things are set up and you go in like you are actually in Van Gogh's pictures. And I heard oh. it fabulous. So Van Gogh, Miami, if you look it up, you'll find it. Sounds really cool. Another thing too, don't forget, and it's something that we saw at Butterfly Gardens this weekend, a lot of these places have been hurting to have people there. So if you go look for discount coupons too, I mean, we're members of several of those places, but like Butterfly Gardens, they're doing a $5 off if you go online first and print that because they're trying to get people back in the door. So that makes it a little less expensive too. And, and the Everglades and the ocean, you don't have to pay at all. You just have to, in the Everglades, be careful that you come back with all your body parts and don't touch any alligators. Yeah. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> it's funny. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions? For those who are just coming that didn't hear me in the beginning, today is going to be the last class for just a little while. We will be resuming, but I don't know the exact date of when we're coming back. Um, I do for one have, um, I do for one have um, some trips planned for June and July. So I know we won't be meeting in June and July but you will get an email from me when we start resuming classes. And again, at the library, I don't know, but perhaps we'll even be doing classes back at the library in the fall or mixing it up. Some classes at the library, some on Zoom. I don't, I don't know yet what's going to actually happen, but we will definitely be back for art. And I've so loved doing this experience with all of you. So I hope you come back. Me too. Thank you. I enjoy it too. And and don't forget, from us to you, Julie, thank you very much. Uh, no matter what happens, we wouldn't be us without you. So thank oh, you thanks. for all your time and effort. Well, thank you. It's I've so definitely. loved being with this group. It, it's very special to me. Thank you, Mercedes, for introducing me to <laughs> Sterling Road Library. Yep. And again, check out our, um, our calendar because Throughout the summer, we have so many wonderful programs and different kinds of classes, everything from yoga 
to art history. We have a professor from FIU that comes on at least once a month, if not more, and through the summer, and um, she's fabulous. So check out our calendar. That's why I tried to put that link to the uh, summer learning program magazine that the library put out. I tried to put that link in the chat, but I'm told it didn't uh, didn't work right. But if you go, I guess, on the library webpage, you can find uh, something about that. And you can go on there and click to register for a whole bunch of really cool things. I myself have four different classes that I'm doing in, with uh, uh, art, uh, three in June and one in August. Um, so you can look for those. But there's so much fun stuff. Uh, I've registered for something that's a, a program about getting to know the Big Cypress uh, National Park area. I, I registered for that. It, it's free, it's on Zoom, uh, and there's gonna be someone doing like a tour and explaining all kind of stuff. And I thought that sounded like so much fun. Uh, so I registered and signed up for that myself. Mm. And just one more quick plug for, uh, for my own deal, uh, if you in June, and July, when we're not meeting with the Sterling Friends, if you want to continue on these every other Fridays, you're welcome to go to my YouTube channel, which Jackie did put a link to that in the chat, um, and do the every other Friday's live stream. That'll be free to you. You just uh, have to go to youtube.com and then find my page, or you can get that link that uh, Jackie put there. You can also find a link to that on my web page and on my Facebook page. And, um, and if you're on my newsletter, I'll be sending stuff out in my newsletter email list. Um, I mean, if, yeah, if you're on my email list, you'll get my newsletter. So yes, I like to receive your, your news. Thank you. All right. Uh, I'm, I'm glad I, I'm, I'm very happy for you, Mercedes. <laughs> 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 you don't send me things like, like, uh, why am I getting this? Take no no way. <laughs> no way. On the contrary, I share it with my friends. Yeah, yeah, she does. Appreciate that. <laughs> yes, Angelina, for example. Yeah. <laughs> so I painted my uh, my gardenias because oh. I've been really struggling with my um my gardenias this summer. They just um, they're not doing well, and I'm oh. trying to figure out what I'm doing wrong so they can. Uh, get back to thriving and making beautiful flowers and they smell so good. Gardenias are one of my favorites because of how they smell. Yes, I have a big gardenia tree in front of my house and it's beautiful, blooming. Well, I definitely have gardenia envy because my <laughs> gardenia tree is not big and it's, I just got through um, last weekend, I cut about three fourths of it off because it had turned brown Oh, no. And um, and I'm hoping that I cut all of the the bad. Maybe it seems like it's diseased. I don't know. Um, so I'm hoping I cut all the bad part off and I put some of that um, that kind of disease and insect killer and fertilizer all in one. That's granules that you stir into the soil um, and yes. then water it in. I put that on it. And my my fingers are crossed that it it comes back because I love them. Meanwhile, well, when I have that issue, I went to Home Depot and the guy there told me, use water with ivory detergent. Really? But, yeah, just one drop of it and spray all the leaves and it solves the problem. Huh, okay. When mine gets some more leaves, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it, it has leaves, but not very many right now because so much of it had turned brown and I've been working on it pretty much, it feels like all of the last two or three months, trying to get it to get over whatever was wrong with it. It's, it's not there yet. It will be. Thank you. I'm gonna take your word for it and trust you, Mercedes. Yes. Yeah, she knows. <laughs> <laughs> I have had my gardenia for 21 years now and it's blooming now. Oh my goodness. I had a really pretty 
um, thing that I'm not sure was it jasmine or gardenia because it made orange blooms. Oh, beautiful. And, um, but it smelled just like a gardenia. Yes. But I think gardenia and jasmine smell similar. Yes, they do. So I'm not sure which it was, but it um, last summer, all of a sudden it got some kind of a problem and <sighs> just died so quickly. Oh. So um, um, I'm hoping that I don't lose this one. No. I like my flowers. Yes, me too. That gives me an idea. Next, I will draw the gardenia. All right. It's 2.30. So um, does anybody have any questions about anything? OK, until we meet again, I'm going to miss you guys. Miss Enjoy you this Enjoy the I summer. Just, yeah, I you all too. But we'll see. We're going to hook enjoy. up again soon. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you Thanks, everyone. Julie. Thanks, everyone, for thank you, participating. Thank you. Thank get you. In touch after July. Uh, great class for students. Stay in touch. Oh, Mercedes, that's cute. Yeah, like it, is, it, is, it, is, it is not me and my husband. Is, I have been watching Holmar movies all the time, movies. So, oh, oh. <laughs> I think it's interesting okay. that you put the bride and groom right next to the monkey. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. You Thank you. Real. <laughs> Julie, how can we watch a recording of this? Okay, because I missed the beginning of our friends it. page, Sterling Library. Wait, I have it. It's sterlingfriends.org. Sterlingfriends.org. It'll, org, it'll yes. just come right up. Come right up. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. They're all on there too, Jillian. Right from the beginning. So, yep. Great. Right. Thank you. I hope to see some of you at my live streams over the summer, but if not, have a good not summer. Let's we'll see you in the fall. We'll in the fall. Right. We're going to try. Thank you so much. Bye. 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 Be in touch. In touch. You guys need anything? Oh, no. Nope, I Christine, think you were recording it. I will hang on to my copy of it until you know for sure you've got yours. And then we'll okay. go from there. Thanks. I'll let you know it, you know, it takes about an hour or so for it to finish converting and saving it onto my computer, but I'll know. And I'll let you know as soon as I know, but I don't see any problems. I mean, it looks like it's